God bless you. What a joy it is to have this opportunity to greet you and welcome you to Discipleship Development. I am Pastor Shane D. Rayner, pastor and founder of Living Word Community of Tuscumbia, Alabama. And it is with the joy of Jesus that I welcome and greet each of you to our friends, our family, and to all of you, my father's children. It is such a wonderful opportunity to connect with you again. Living Word Community is a purpose-driven church. It is our purpose to build a community of believers, and we are doing that through prayer, discipleship, and partnership. We believe that this is the year of expansion. God is growing us beyond our wildest imagination, and we are here for all of it. I hope and pray you've had a great day today. And somewhere throughout the day that you've paused long enough to tell the Lord, thank you for another day. Hey, let's do that just now. Just take a moment and tell God, thank you for bringing uh, for bringing us through another day. All right. Listen, I would love for you to share this um, take that link, take the link there on YouTube and share it with your family, your friends, just copy it and send it in a text, send it in an email, however you do it, post it on your page, however you do it, help me get the word out this evening. I'm excited about our time together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the online space of the Lord. All right. Listen, if you are ever in uh, Tuscumbia, Alabama, we would love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for our word and worship experience. We had an experience on Sunday like no other experience. And we believe that there's nothing like a live word and worship experience at Living Word Community. If you can't make it to the building, of course, you know you can join us online at Living Word Community. All right. Also, I need you to know and understand that we are on social media. We want you to follow us and connect with us um, on social media. And as we are posting and uh, encouraging, inspiring, connect with us and you can receive all of those notifications. Not sure if you have heard or not, but Living Word Community has an app. Yes, we have an app, uh, Living Word Dash Tuscumbia. If you would download that uh, from your um, app store and uh, help us to um, stay connected. Amen. Everything Living Word Community, it comes through the app. On Sunday mornings, our preaching series is Closer, Draw Near to God. Amen. So we're looking forward uh, to sharing this on Sunday morning, which was supposed to be the third, um, amen, piece of this on Sunday morning. I just did not get to it on Sunday. It was that kind of Sunday. All right. As we continue in our uh, time together. Let's prepare now to worship the Lord in giving. Amen. We believe that there are three reasons we give at Living Word Community. Number one, first of all, because it's right. Giving is right. Secondly, we give because of the return. The Bible teaches the law or principle of sowing and reaping. If you sow, you shall reap. And thirdly, we give because it gives us the opportunity to rejoice. We're rejoicing because God is involved in our financial situation. All right. You see the options on the screen. Amen. They're the same every week. So we want you to take um, advantage. Take a moment to prepare your gift as we are sowing tonight. Amen. I teach um, all of the partners of Living Word Community. We do not come to the table empty handed. Amen. We're not paying for the word, but we understand the principle of sowing and reaping. All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time 
that you've allowed us to come together. We come together tonight understanding and realizing that you are God and there is no God like you in all the earth. We ask now in Jesus' name that you forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. We thank you for your provision and your protection today. We thank you for your peace and your prosperity today. We thank you, Lord, that you have done more than enough. And as we respond to your goodness, uh, unto us, we ask that you would receive these gifts as we release them and position us to reap a harvest that we don't have room enough to receive. Now, Lord, as we have ascended to this teaching moment, we pray that you would release teaching power. Teach to me, teach through me, Heavenly Father. And I need you, Heavenly Father, to touch tonight in a mighty way. Open our hearts that we may believe. Open our eyes that we may see and open our ears ears that we may hear. Help me to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. All right, family, thank you so much. I'm going to thank you in advance. Amen for your giving. Continue to give and continue to be faithful unto the Lord. God is still the God that rewards faithfulness. All right, we will continue in our series, It Happens After Prayer. I really hope that you've been enjoying um, this series. Um, and I want to um, want to wrap this up tonight, this particular portion of the series can you believe that we only have one more discipleship development in 2023 when we come back the wednesday after thanksgiving we are off next week but the wednesday after thanksgiving that's the final one of uh, 2023 i know it's hard to to imagine that we won't be gathering oh god amen all right, so I want you to take advantage of this time <clears throat> that we have a man together. All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, there we go. All right, and um, we want to continue talking. I, I shared with you um, the series, but um, our our topic in this three-part series has been defeating discouragement from this Luke 18 um, passage and I want to finish um, the third and final piece of that on tonight <clears throat> all right Let's see if I can get this together here okay there we go our scripture tonight Luke 18 7 through 8 a Hear the word of the Lord, and will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. He will give justice to them speedily all right i want to continue um talking tonight from that thought um defeating um defeating discouragement okay we have um for the past three weeks at least this is the third week uh we have been um studying this particular parable um the lord of this widow woman. And in verse one, Jesus gives us uh, what we need. He says, you should always pray and never give up. When we started this some weeks ago, I told you that um, you have to recognize your triggers because there are triggers, we all have them, that prompt us to give up, uh, whether it's personal, uh, whether it's relational, um, spiritual, and there was one more. Anybody can remember that last one? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I cannot remember. It's spiritual, moral, relational, personal. I said all of them. Okay. Amen. Whether it's spiritual, uh, relational, moral, 
or personal, you and I have uh, triggers that will prompt us to give up when life is difficult. If you would do some investigation and if you would give attention to the last time you were triggered to quit or to give up, you would see it falls on the one of the four categories. And we also uh, talked about how important it is uh, if we're going to defeat discouragement to respond with persistent prayer. Okay, you have to keep praying. You have to continue to believe God, continue to talk to God, continue to trust God, because the Bible is very clear that if we engage in persistent praying, then it will help us not to give up. Okay. So the third piece tonight, as I close this particular um, portion of our series, I want to talk tonight of how important it is for us to understand the reality of our position. I need you to catch that tonight. It is very important that we understand the reality of our position. What do you mean, Pastor, when you talk about our position? When you hear me talk about our position, uh, Jesus, at the end of this parable, um, he he begins to share some things that we need to hear. And as he's sharing, he mentions God's elect. W what does it mean to be God's elect? What is Jesus talking about when he uses this word elect? This word elect, it means to be chosen or selected by God. Now, the election process of salvation simply means God chose us for himself. Don't get it twisted. We are saved because God wanted us before we knew he existed. When we made the decision to give the Lord our lives, we were really responding to his drawing. John chapter six, verse 44 says that none can come to Jesus except the father draws them. So in reality, without the drawing of God, there is no decision that will ever be made. In other words, God is so serious about our relationship with him that he puts everything into motion. He makes the first move. According to Ephesians chapter one, verses three through four, I'm paraphrasing here. He says, watch this. He chose us in in him before the foundation of the world. Therefore, before God said, let there be light. He had us on his mind and he had chosen us to be his own. Hold up. Wait a minute. One more time. All right. We're before God, according to Ephesians chapter one, verse three and four, before God said, let there be whatever, let there be light. We know that was first. Let there be light. God already had a plan in motion for us to be his. He had already chosen us before he created us. Lord have mercy. So when we pray church and friends, it is imperative for us to understand the reality of our position in Jesus Christ. Because we don't come to God in prayer as if we are an unwanted, unplanned, or purposeless child. No, no, no. We come to God in prayer with confidence. And the confidence derives from us being his choice. Help me tonight, God. When is the last time, church and friends, that you prayed with the reality of being his choice? When is the last time you said to God, God, I'm praying this prayer today, not so much because I'm yours, not because you are mine, but more of the 
the reality that I am yours. That, that, that being chosen, Lord, help me. It carries a level of confidence that I don't believe the church has really tapped into because too many of us enter into our prayer time oblivious of who we are in the Lord. Therefore, when you discover who God is, when you ask God, reveal who you are to me through your word, and when God answers them, he will give you insight insight into who you are in him. I need you to say this with me, church, because I don't think we have it yet. Say this with me. I am God's choice. Come on. I need you to hear it. I need to hear it like I can hear you. I need you to say it tonight. I am God's choice. I'll say it again. He wanted you and I before we knew he existed. Wow. That's the type of confidence and swag I need you to walk into your prayer room with. When you fall on your knees and say, our father, you bow before him with the confidence that I can call you because you chose me. Help me tonight. So I have three, of course, dynamics that will help us to understand why it is so important for us catch this church to understand our position in Jesus Christ here is the first dynamic I don't want you to miss it God has given us access are you listening God has given us access. Please don't miss this. We, those of us who are believers, who have confessed hope in Jesus Christ, we have access to God through his son, our savior, Jesus Christ. We have the blessed privilege of conversing with him through prayer in the name of Jesus. Therefore, our prayer time must be a priority because God has made a way for us to have this access. With this access, church, comes great responsibility. We, we, we should never be viewed, we should never view our prayer time as a scheduled appointment with a busy executive. No, no, no. We should never view our prayer time uh, with the attitude of this is a meeting with my boss. No, 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 no. We, we have to learn how to slow down and take advantage of every moment we spend with God in prayer because it is necessary. Let the church out necessary. It is necessary for us to view and value our prayer time as quality time with our heavenly father. I don't know if you know this or not, but God loves for us to spend quality time with him in prayer. I'll say it one more time. God loves for us to spend quality time with him in prayer. And I really didn't grasp the magnitude of this until the Lord reminded me of how I've grown in my fatherhood, in fatherhood. One of the things I notice about our sons is how independent they are becoming. Because over the years, I have watched them bring me toys to fix. I've glued wrestlers back together and I've changed batteries in and out of toys and cars and, and, and whatever. But, but the older they get, the more they begin to do things on their own. Now, 
I I have to be creative in having moments uh, with them so that I can have this one on one time with them because I, I, I don't I don't ever want them to come to me uh, like uh, uh, because they, they, they don't they don't come to me like they used to with every little thing. Uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm learning how to, to create moments uh, so that we can kind of have that time uh, to talk one on one, whether it is uh, on our way to school. Um, so sometimes I, I purposely. I purposely, uh, uh, if Landon uh, seems to be slower, I purposely uh, tell Logan, come on, let's go. I'll drop you off, Landon. I'm coming back to get you so that I can spend that one on one time with Logan. Or when I drop Logan off, I spend that one on one time uh, with Landon on the way to school or if I'm picking him up from practice or, or if we're riding to church, whatever. I try to create these moments uh, to have meaningful conversations because I don't ever want them them to think that uh, uh, they, they don't have access to their dad, Pastor Rainer. I, I, I constantly remind them, yes, I'm Pastor Rainer, but I'm uh, I'm your dad. My my greatest ministry, it, it, Lord have mercy, is, is not what God has called me to do at his house. I believe my greatest ministry is what God has called me to do here in my house. Uh, what, what I need you to understand is that I, I don't I, I don't ever want them to 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 create these um uh, to think or to 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 have doubt that they can't ever come to me so i want to make sure that we have moments of quality time and one day uh, the lord reminded me as i picked up logan and and uh, he got into the truck he was just bubbling uh, to share something with me and and before he could get it out i said Shh, Shh, i'm on the phone uh, uh, he he said, but dad, I said, hold, hold on, I'm on, I'm on the phone. So when I picked him up, I was, I was on the phone and, and he had to wait until we got home. And I finally got off the phone and I said, okay, bud, what, what is it? He, he, I said, go ahead and share. He said, dad, can, can I say something to you b before I share my news? I said, yeah, come on, bud, whatever. What's up? What's up? He said, dad, I don't like when you pick me up and you're on the phone. I said, oh. Because, you know, we create this space. Sometimes it's a good space. Sometimes it's not. We create this space where they can be honest with us. OK, respectful, but honest with us uh, without us, you know, setting them straight or whatever. Uh, so we, 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 we create this space so they can do that. And when he said to me, I don't like you being on the phone when you pick me up. Because there are times that I really want to talk to you, but I can't talk to you because you are on the phone. Now, knowing my son, what he was really saying to me as I interpreted what he says is I value our one on one time. Now, we'll talk in those 10 to 12 minutes on the way home. But once we get home, he goes his way. I go my way. We'll meet up again if he needs help with homework or if it's time to eat or if it's time to go to practice. But usually from the time I pick him up to the time we get to the house, that's our time to talk. And in his own way, he says to me, I value our one on one time. Friends, I felt compelled to share that uh, to you because share that with you, because I don't ever want you to think that you have to worry if God has time for you. <laughs> Our God is so awesome that he can talk to me. He can talk to you. He can talk to her. He can talk to him. He can talk to them all at the same time and never be distracted. Don't ever think that God doesn't want to talk to you, that God is too busy to talk to you. No, 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 church. I believe God has given us access and he expects us to use it on a daily basis. Because as you grow and develop your time of prayer with God, uh, 
And as you grow and you begin to prioritize and you begin to value that time, you will learn how therapeutic that time really is. And more than anything, it's our reality because God has given us this access. I want you to get that today. I want you to grasp that today. Here's sub catalog B that I want you to understand what God is doing for us, what God has done for us. And this is why it's important to understand uh, the reality of our position in him. God has not only given us access, but God has given us an advocate. Okay. God has given us an advocate. If you remember in the parable, the widow, she didn't have anyone to speak to the judge on her behalf. However, as God's elect, we have an advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. And understand that an advocate is a defense attorney. I know you're wondering, Pastor, why do we need a defense attorney? We have an accuser. His name is the devil. God is the judge. I don't know about you, but if you have an accuser and if there is a judge, you need a defense attorney. <laughs> According to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, the accuser, Satan, the devil, he goes before God day and night making accusations against God's elect. Lord have mercy. When this happens, church, our advocate, woo, he intervenes by coming to our defense. It is as if Satan day and night. Did you catch that? Dr. E. Dewey Smith, he used this years ago. He says, it's a shame that God, that Satan goes before God day and night, making accusations on our behalf. And some of us can't get there at least one time a day, but the enemy is praying day and night. But some of us have a hard time getting there at least one time a day. I just, I, I remember that when I looked at the text. But what happens, church, is that our advocate, he comes to our defense. It is as if Satan shows up, the court is in session, and he says to God, listen to these accusations. Yesterday, Shane was very ungrateful. And your word says that they should give thanks in all things. Yesterday, Shane was concerned with trusting you, but your word says trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yesterday, Shane didn't feel he had enough strength to endure his current circumstance, but your word says that you can do, they can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God, these are my accusations against Shane this morning, and I want to know, uh, will you find him guilty for sinning and going against your word? It is in that moment when God says, okay, is there anyone here for uh, that will stand on behalf of Shane Rayner? Jesus stands up and says, yes, your honor, I am here on behalf of Mr. Rayner, and I want to enter into evidence my blood. Now, as I enter this into evidence, God, I need you to understand that my blood was offered as the payment of Shane's debt that he owed to you. And I need you to understand that Shane, yes, 
He did do what was what he was accused of. Yes, he was ungrateful yesterday. Yes, he doubted you yesterday. Yes, he even worried if you would come through. But I want you to know that Shane D. Rayner does not deserve any time because of the evidence that I'm submitting on his behalf. I put my life on the line. I paid his debt in full. Therefore, judge, my client is not guilty. Wow. Somebody ought to help me thank God for intervening and coming to our defense. Now, as I shared that little story with you to paint it and to give it some color so that you can grasp it and understand it. I need you to know that 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 as the devil is accusing me, he's accusing you and Jesus, he intervenes and he comes to our defense as if that's not enough to shout over. There's another dynamic to us having this advocate. Because not only is he intervening, but he's the advocate that intercedes. Lord have mercy. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 34, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for you and I. I started thinking about that as I was preparing this lesson and I began to wonder. I don't know if you ever wonder, but do you ever wonder that if Jesus is praying on my behalf, what in the world is Jesus saying to God about me? Lord have mercy. I'm not sure, but I am sure of one thing. That whatever Jesus is saying to God about me, it has to be God's will for my life. I believe that Jesus is praying God's will over my life. And I almost went into a Baptist fit because I began to think. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for his prayers over my life. Because church, there were some days that if I had to depend on what I said to God to get me through, I would have never made it through. May I suggest to you that when you don't know what to say to God, you got prayer partners, according to Romans chapter eight, verse 26, called the Holy Spirit. Likewise, in our infirmities, the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us when we don't know what to say. He's praying to God on our behalf while Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Help me, Holy Ghost praying on our behalf. I don't know if you realize what it means to have a God that provides an advocate and his job is to intervene and his job is to intercede. Lord, I've almost got happy all over again. But just before we shout tonight, church, I have to give you Subcatalog C, because not only has God, Lord have mercy, given us access, not only has God given us an advocate, but lastly, God has given us his assurance. Where is that, Pastor Rainer, in the text? Here it is. God promises to do two things for his children, for his chosen people that cry out to him day and night. Here's the first thing. He promises to do what is right. Did you hear that? He promises to do that which is right. That's what he says in the text. Will not God grant justice? Will not God do that which is right? Now, this is what I need you to grab tonight, because this promise is in uh, it is according to God's righteousness and not ours. 
I've discovered, church, that a lot of what we deem as righteousness contradicts God's righteousness. Secondly, God has given us the assurance and he promises that as he's going to do what's right, the text says that he's going to move in a hurry. He's going to do it speedily. John Butler says it this way. God promised to move in a hurry. But he's not necessarily saying he's going to answer quickly. But when God answers, he's going to move in a hurry. Does that make sense? Because you have to look at the, the, the context of the text, of the parable. Because the, the, the judge, he would not do anything. He said because she kept coming, because she was praying persistently. Okay? Okay. So the flow of the context matters. I believe and I agree with John Butler not that, that God is going to come in a hurry. But whenever he answers, he's going to move in a hurry. Therefore, our ancestors was right when they, they were right when they when they taught us and they turned up on the fact that he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. How do we defeat discouragement? The reality is we are tempted and prompted to become discouraged more than we realize. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how good your life is. The reality is Sometimes your flesh is going to get the best of you. And you're not going to want to want to do things the way God wants it done because it doesn't seem like it's going to work out. But I want to talk to somebody tonight that you've been there. You didn't have a prayer nowhere near your mouth or your mind. You tried to give up. You tried to throw in the towel. You tried to quit. But God wouldn't let you quit. I want to talk to you tonight because I need you to understand that you're going to be triggered. You're going to be prompted to quit. But if you learn how to pray, oh God, if you understand and recognize when you're triggered to just stop and pray, does that make sense? If you could just stop and pray, whenever you are triggered, just stop and, and pray. Pray and ask God to help you. When you're triggered, you got to respond with persistence. Not just one prayer. It has to be a multitude of prayers. Every time you're triggered, keep praying. Respond with prayer. And we defeat discouragement, we learn tonight, by understanding the reality of our position. We have access. God has given us access. We have an advocate. God has given us an advocate and we have God's assurance that he's going to do what's right. And whenever he moves, it's going to be a swift move. Be encouraged, my brother and my sister. The God who created the heavens and the earth, he has chosen you as his own know that you are valuable to him know that he loves you and wants nothing but the best for you know that he's crazy about you and he has a plan for your life 
understand the reality of your position in him. Because it happens after prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time that we've shared together in your presence with your people. And I pray that this time has been a time of impartation, this time of influence, this time of inspiration with this information that you've given. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would forgive us because many of us have lost sight of our reality, of the reality of our position in you. Oh, Lord, my God, I still believe that as you have called, chosen, and selected us, you're going to finish what you started. So I ask you to forgive us for those days that we, we lost sight of who we were in you. Give us the courage, the confidence, and the comfort to walk out your will for our lives. We pray now in Jesus' name. And we ask this all. Amen. All right, family, I hope you've been encouraged and, uh, and uh, challenged and helped tonight as we've shared this word with you. As always, I want to take just a moment to share Jesus Christ with you. If you're on tonight and you want to surrender your life to him, Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of grace. Save me now. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. I accept you now as my Lord and personal savior. I will live for you through the power of Holy Spirit. I want to be saved and I want to be baptized in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer tonight, welcome to the family of God. I need you to text born AGN to 84576. Our staff is waiting to respond to each of you. Lastly, on tonight, if you desire to become a partner of Living Word Community, partner is just an upgraded term that we use um, instead of membership or member. If that's you tonight, I want you to text join LWCC to 84576. Here's our disclaimer. We are not a perfect church, but God is perfecting us to become what he's called us to be. Amen. If you are out of state, out of town, out of the country, and you want to connect with us and become an online partner, that option is available as well. Text the number. We'll help you figure it out and get you connected. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to sharing again with each of you on Sunday morning. Thank you so much for your prayers. It's working. I sound better, right? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Hey, I love you and I thank God for you. Hey, let's go up on Sunday morning. We're going again. Amen. And we want the glory of God to fall in that house. All right. Remember, we are off next week. But we'll be back for the final discipleship development of 2023. All right. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. God smile on your people forevermore. For it is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Go, grow and glow. It is so. Peace.